Good morning, everyone. How are we? I'm cool. I'm good. I've just gone for a run and uh, just going to talk about ego and someone that I've been working with um, lately. You can look him up. Brand Hart is um, someone that works. He's a marketing person, but he actually works on brand. I saw him speak recently and uh, really amazing and he he essentially says that the leader the leader of any company tribe um, business family and their why is really what drives um, a lot of everything it drives everything not a lot of everything and so when you look at um, the component of uh, we spoke you know, three and a half hours the other day around what that means and can you can you be egoless and essentially no you you can't be you can't you can't actually you know, I can't um get through life like I maybe maybe my viewpoint will change after working with him uh, uh but definitely the first thing that um came to the table was around ego and knowing that you know I've got one I've got a pretty big one everyone's got one but uh Controlling it is really the most important part of um, the capacity of it. And so, can you be egoless? The answer is basically no. And uh, the way Glenn's worked is he's he's essentially has, and this is how I've started to work now too, is that you've got yourself. So Ian um, is me, and then you've got basically two other personalities, and that is one of the the ego, and so you name your ego a person's name or whatever you want to call it, and then you have your unconscious mind. And uh, one of the aha moments for me was that uh, you have a look at those people that are considered to have a disability, which are, you know, for example, the autistic um, scale, the spectrum, the range, that essentially they are. Uh, they're actually very much in touch with their unconscious mind. So Glenn's work is about pulling together the the ego and the conscious mind. So the ego conscious mind and the unconscious mind. And I'm sure if Glenn's watching it, he'll be going, no, well, you've got it wrong. So I still haven't finished the work with him. Uh, so this is my view of the world on the short bit of work that we've been doing together already. And so you've got your ego that has one name and that you consciously think about things and then the unconscious mind which has another name so effectively there's three names there's you as the human the ego that tries and runs every every part of your day which is not really in control and it's trying to control and the unconscious mind which is really in control but you don't allow it to be so um you know, so when you talk about the conscious mind, the conscious mind is ability is to filter five to seven um, bits per second, whereas the unconscious mind can do two million bits per second. And then you know, if you calculate it and tra tra the speed of travel, that it's you know essentially very very large um, amount of information, more than any computer will ever be able to process in our lifetime. So it's a you know the conscious unconscious mind. Um, are two really different things. So, you know, currently right now you're listening to this, you're, you're consciously aware of the fact that there's movement going on uh, in this picture alone. So, you know, you probably unconsciously see that I've got bags under my eyes, that altogether I look tired, and it's probably because I am tired. Uh, you're sitting down at the moment, maybe you're um, having breakfast, so you're not actually you're not consciously aware of the fact that your um, bum is touching a seat, that there's uh, air floating around you and that you can feel things that um, your, your conscious mind is doing it. Then you're not, you're not concentrating on making sure that your breath is right. You're not concentrating on the fact that your heart is beating and making sure that it beats. So all these unconscious things that happen every second, you're not in control of, uh, it's just unconsciously happening. So people that are on the autistic spectrum actually have 
direct access to the unconscious mind and ultimately Glenn's work is about creating the unconscious mind and the decision making of what you do around that and that's another word for intuition so people that I know that every time I've made a decision against intuition that it's not been quite right for me um, it's not turned out right for me and intuitively you know you look back at that situation like I remember investing in a particular uh, property and I when I drove into town I drove into the town three times um, first time for due diligence the second time for a second round to ensure that I was happy and to find the property and the third time was to buy the property and the third time I went in there I just felt like it was my intuition as I drove into the town was this does not feel right but my conscious mind it said oh I've done the numbers I've done the decision I made all the decisions and as it turns out it wasn't right it was it was it, you know within six months that town wasn't in a good state and uh, I'd went I'd gone against it now that's just one example we all we all do it uh, so you know that's that's where we got to so you know it's really important to understand that you can't be egoless you will always have ego it's about how you control your ego your ego is that little man on the shoulder that um, or girl or whoever on the shoulder that says to you you don't need to do that you know every morning when I wake up at um, you know so I've now been awake for um, about two and a bit hours and every morning that that alarm clock goes off if, if it goes off because my unconscious mind automatically sets the alarm for me anyway I just put it on because I've got a running partner and I don't want to let her down effectively the two and a half hours um, that I've been awake there's always that struggle that the ego says just take the day off you know your hips a little bit sore and and you don't really need to run and whilst the so the ego can work in two ways there because it could be that you don't need to run you need to give yourself a rest and that's more about you're about to go out and do something that's going to be a little bit uncomfortable and it's in the long run going to affect you in a positive way but you don't really need to do it so don't bother doing it you'll be right one day off won't matter the second part of the ego that could be working there is that when you're out there with the sore hip uh what's the real reason that you're running is it because your ego is saying that you want to look trim and proper and you know you want to grab you know you want to work towards a six pack so the ego can work on the other way effectively though intuitively I know that um, wow I got emotional really quickly I know that without uh, the without the running or without the exercise that you know the, the body chemistry and you know the four separate style of chemicals that run around your body to make you happy um, and Glenn talked about the crystal palace so the crystal palace uh, according to ancient times and and books around um, that era is the three the three areas of the brain which is the hypothalamus the pituitary gland the pineal gland they actually control and run everything in your body as far as thoughts processes your RAS your um, chemicals and how everything gets put together so that you run on a daily basis as a normal whatever normal means person uh, and so you know that's a that's another really interesting system the RAS system only pulls together what you want so when you talk about quantum physics and this is what Glenn talks about a lot as well quantum physics and how you attract what you're looking for you know the, the old classic example is that you go out and you buy a yellow car and it's the newest sports car on the road and you go wow I'm gonna look so amazing here no one else has got one of these and you drive out of the driveway and the first thing you see is another yellow sports car exactly the same as you and then go to the next traffic lights and same thing and it's not the fact was that though those yellow sports cars were always there it's that you're out looking for it I always use the example of me being a plumber I'm sure that not very many people notice all the plumbing trucks on the road but I do like every time I'm driving around I go oh there's a plumbing truck and there's a plumbing truck and that's another plumber you know that's because my RAS my reticulate reticulated activated system is aware consciously looking for these um, six 
seven to nine bits per second of information that I can grab to, to pull it together. So, uh, so can you be eager? Let's know. Um, today is a particular day for me that you know um, is is difficult in a way, but is positive in a way too because it's the it's the end of an era of something um, that's happening and I'm not involved with and it's the beginning of an era where I'm involving myself in myself for myself uh, moving forward so you know the the fact is that uh, one one part of the chapter's finished the book's closed and I've opened up another book completely and another chapter starting around um, moving forward and and in my own mind um, and it's conscious mind I've been able to say intuitively that we're we're doing the right thing I feel right about what we're doing and I can't do anything about anyone else and this is a big thing about Glenn too and the ego you have no control over what anyone else does what anyone else says how anyone else acts and if you concern yourself about anyone else then your ego is activating I recently uh, I won't tell you the particular situation, but I re recently acted on someone else doing something else, and uh, it's interesting that as soon as soon as that um, someone realised that I was paying attention to them, I'd lost power there. I sh I, the ultimate power was for me not to even and acknowledge it, not even to allow it, but I did, and that was my ego. And so I knew it straight away. As soon as soon as I did it, I went, "That was the wrong thing to do. I shouldn't have done that." And uh, that's the ego that kicked in. And so remember, you can't. I have a belief that if you didn't have ego, you wouldn't be able to get up in the morning and breathe. Uh, like Glenn might change that view, uh, but then again, you know things change so interesting over the time um, that I've been working for mentors at different periods of my life um, the first three periods of my life I thought I only had to work with a mentor for a little bit with the mentor for a little bit achieve what I need to achieve and that would be the end and I'd be right for life but then I realized that this is a continuous and active part of development that you continually work on yourself and as I said in a previous Facebook Live that these things, as the next issue comes up, it takes longer to resolve within yourself and develop within yourself, uh, and it's a bigger and stronger hit at, at uh, a change, and at, they're more in depth and they're full on. So, yeah, so I knew recently that I did something, I went, oh, damn it, that was stupid, wasn't it? I've only got my own race to run here. And I should be only racing, I shouldn't be concerning myself about other people. Now that's not to say that you should be blind, but you really shouldn't be, um, you know, being being really thin-skinned and really being affected by other people um, is something that I'm, I'm working, that's part of, my, well, I hope, most of the work that I'm doing at the moment. And uh, interestingly enough, the majority of my mentors in my life have, have mostly been fe female, so I've now moved into the male spectrum they may be feminine people though <laughs> who knows uh, so yeah it's interesting so can you be egoless no I don't think you can uh, I think you've got to distinguish between the ego and what they're trying to achieve and if it's not really for the good of humanity or community or whatever it is <clears throat> it's likely that your ego is driving it so money is a big ego driver um, and so if you're ever doing anything for money and I know people say they don't do something for money uh, I I in the majority of times would question that uh, if you're not if you're doing it for other reasons other than money money can come because of something that you do intuitively uh, but you know if you're doing it if people are saying you know I don't do it for the money I go and oh, okay well let's break this down and so would you get up in the morning go and do what you do and um, go home and be happy to be unpaid for it and the majority of the work that we're doing at the moment is is around that and and it just happens to be that we are getting a, a benefit from it uh, and that's assisting community and, and making change which is really really exciting for us in the community and spectrum and you know making sure that um, we have 
the that that what we're doing is affecting people in a positive way and uh, most of you most of you know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and uh, like I say I've I've changed the way that I, I present my education program and in high res and and the reason I present it and that's that's been a, a big change to um, to what we've been doing and the results that we've been getting so you know when I um, I spoke recently to a really, really well-known Australian property uh, person, man, who's written a couple of books that, you know, sold over 200,000 books. And, and in that, um, the, in that the, he basically said his style of being able to talk to people is um, hard tell and a soft sell. And in recent times, I've been getting up in front of people and saying to them, the way it normally works here is that you go to see a, a speaker on a particular subject and that speaker will talk to you about your problems and they, they won't actually be directly talking to you. They will be agitating a problem. And so within yourself, you'll be sitting there going, that's me, that's the problem I've got. And then they'll agitate that problem even further and they'll bring it up higher and then they'll agitate again and go even higher. And then you'll be sitting there in the middle of the presentation going, my life's really crap. I don't know how I'm going to change my life. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then the next step will be uh, the solution. And so they'll present to the solution. So I'll actually agitate a problem, agitate it again. You'll wonder how you're going to fix it. And they provide the solution. You go and sign up to something. You go home and you have buyer's remorse because you're not sure why you did it. Now, I'm not saying that it's not the right thing for you to do. However, the way that it was done, I believe needs to change for the majority of how the industry works. And and so what I did in the last tour, um, which has been the most successful tour that I've had, in, and the reason it was, was because I, I went away from, from say, the selling and went to, um, which I've been doing for the last four years, except that I completely took emphasis off the selling and, and agitating someone's problem. So what I did was I got up and I simply said the truth. I said, this is the way it's going to be. And if you want to be on board, you can be on board. You know that you've turned up to a free event, which I'm telling you is simply a way for people to come so that we can send a message out to everyone. And at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you an offer and present to you something that I hope that you um, want to take up tonight and that you will come aboard tonight. And I'm not going to show that you're a problem. I don't think you're the problem. I can tell you that there is a problem. The problem's in the community. It's around affordable housing and you're the solution to the problem. You're not a problem within yourself. You know, if you decide that you want to continue to move forward doing what you're doing, that's fine. You know, everyone everyone eventually gets to a point in time where, you know, they, they've realised that, that their life is their life and they can do it at their own pace whenever they do. They don't need someone like me to agitate a problem uh, to produce something that ultimately could be a, a wrong decision for you right now. And, um, and, and I also say that if, if by signing up to this program that you're going to be in a financial position that's worse off tomorrow than what you are today, it's probably not for you, not for now. And if you want to do it, then go out and, and, and make sure that you can afford to do what you're about to commit to. I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, you know, you can come in with very low money and you can start with no money at all. And I'm simply saying that that may well be the case, that some people do succeed out of coming into programs with no money and take off and do amazing things. However, you know, there's still a level of responsibility when you're talking in front of people and you're, you're giving information that you're completely open with that. And, and it's been a really nice feeling to be able to get off stage. Um, and, and it's not that I was ever, I was never, ever a hard seller. I never really manipulated, um, people and used NLP in the wrong direction. I always made sure that, and I continue to make sure that whatever I say, I say it in a way that that's, you know, right for the market. Some people can't handle my style in my teaching style. Other people can. Other people um, have their own stuff that they've got to work through and they, they're trying to put stuff on um, for themselves to try and sort it out. In the end, um, for me, just getting up and saying to people, this is how it is. This is the way it's, this is what I'd like you to see, that there's a problem in community, there's no problem with you, and that you're part of the solution. 
and it um it was a really good take up and it was really and what that means for me is that when I'm with this tribe that we've created that we're getting the right people all the time not the not the majority of people being the right people and then you get the odd not so right uh what it means is that we're getting some really good people and it's great to be part of this tribe uh and ultimately you know I'll continue to do the work and this this work that I am doing with with Glenn um will lift me to the to the next level of leadership and ability to to translate that into everyone else in the tribe so that they can make better as well. So can you be egoless? No is the answer. You can't be egoless because otherwise where would we be? It would be a um sorry state for you, I think. But ultimately what we're trying to do is get into the unconscious mind um and and make decisions from the unconscious mind, from the intuitive mind and and be really heartfelt around that being the right thing for you. So that's my day. I hope you all have a wonderful day and that you uh, smile as much as you possibly can. I've been trying to do that more and more, um, especially after the conversation with Glenn. So keep smiling. See ya.